Hello, Makani friends and relatives. Thank you for joining us for this quick, informative, and instructional tutorial on healing oils and salves with our plant relatives. Infusing our medicinal plants into our traditional fats and oils is a method of creating topical medicines for us Indigenous people. Today, you are going to learn a little about the plant infusion process, traditional and modern fat and oil carriers, and the benefits of a few carriers and plant relatives that are commonly used to create healing oils and salves. We will close with a quick video tutorial showing how to make a healing salve from infused medicinal oil. Okay, let's jump in. First, let's take a look at the oil infusion process. Infused oils are traditional external medicine that not only provide the benefits of the plant, but also the carrier. Plants are infused into lipid or fatty oils to extract their medicinal properties. Cold and heat infusion methods are both used to extract the plant medicine into the oil. The cold method involves soaking dried plant material in a carrier oil over four to six weeks. The heated method involves warming the oil for hours to days, depending on the heat level and plant material, to more rapidly infuse the plant medicine into the oil. Once the plant medicine is infused into the carrier oil, the mix is strained and the oil is ready to use. Now, let's go over some of the properties of the oils and fats used as medicinal carriers. Fish oils, mammal oils, and plant oils are all used to make healing salves. Each has unique properties that allow for the infusion of plant materials at different temperatures. For example, most fish oils and sea mammal fats remain liquid at low temperatures. This allows them to infuse the plant material in without a heat source. And this is due to the high omega-3 fatty acids in them, which prevent solidification at low temperatures. They're lower in saturated fats and richer in unsaturated fats is another property that allows them to remain liquid at low temperatures. Most bird and mammal fats are solid at room temperature, and so they require a heat source to become liquid to infuse our plant medicines into and that's because these are higher in saturated fats. The lower that there are saturated fats in a species, the more likely it is to be liquid at room temperature. Most plant oils are very low in saturated fats, and so they remain liquid at room temperature. And today, most of the time when we're doing our medicinal infusions, we're using these plant oils that remain liquid at room temperature. While plant oils are the most common carrier used today, some examples of our traditional carriers that come from our fishes and our mammals here are the hooligans, the candlefish or the eulicans. These cold water fishes have extremely low saturated fat and so their fat is at liquid at room temperature. We have whale fats and oils, our traditional carriers, seal and sea lion fats and oils, bear fat, deer, elk, and moose fat, duck or geese fat, squirrel fat, raccoon fat. Essentially, a traditional carrier could be any animal or fish that was hunted or gathered that had enough fat to render. Today, we most commonly use olive oil, sunflower oil, jojoba oil and coconut oil, which is one of those plant oils or fats that is high in saturated fat, so it's solid at room temperature. We also use avocado oil, argon oil, and shea butter, another solid at room temperature, and then beeswax, which is extremely solid at room temperature. There are a diversity of different carriers that are available today from a wide variety of different plants. So now let's take a look at the health benefits of two specific carriers, olive oil and beeswax. 
And those are the two carriers that we'll be using today to make our medicinal salve. First, let's look at olive oil. Olive oil contains vitamin E, which restores damaged skin cells and prevents damaging ultraviolet light from penetrating the skin layers. Olive oil contains vitamin A, which along with vitamin E helps repair cells, aiding in the healing of skin cuts, abrasions, and or rashes. It penetrates deep within the skin layers, making it a great moisturizer. And it also contains antioxidants that reach deep into the pores to help remove dead skin cells, dirt, and even blackheads. Because of this property, it can actually help treat and prevent returning acne as it removes excess oil on the face. So now let's take a look at beeswax. Beeswax provides a barrier from environmental contaminants. It holds in moisture and reduces dryness, but is also breathable, so it doesn't clog pores. Beeswax is a humectant, so it's a substance that attracts water molecules, which helps keep the skin hydrated. And beeswax is antibacterial, helping keep skin clean and reducing the risk of infection. It's also high in vitamin A, which means it helps in cell turnover rates and reconstruction and skin elasticity. Beeswax is also anti-inflammatory and has been shown to help soothe burns, eczema, and promote the healing of wounds. Okay, now that we've looked at the process of infusing our plants into our oils and the different carrier options that we could be infusing that medicine into, let's take a look at a couple of plants that are commonly used in healing salves and healing oils. First, we're gonna take a look at stinging nettle. So nettle oil infusions and salves are traditionally used to relieve aches and pains from rheumatism and arthritis relieve general muscle pain, reduce inflammation, to heal bruising, to promote healing and relieve irritation from pain from eczema, burns, insect bites, cuts, and scrapes. Now this plant for topical use is one that can be harvested from early winter all the way through late summer, early fall. Um, internally, we only harvest this when, until it gets about knee high, but for a topical medicine, it can be harvested year round. And I always say that stinging nettle is a great place for people to start because most people are familiar with this plant and it's very widespread and common. So those of you that received a salve making kit from us, you may have received stinging nettle oil. And so you'll be able to make that medicinal salve using that oil. For those of you that are joining us without the kit, I encourage you to go out and harvest some stinging nettle, infuse it into your oil and create a salve out of it. Now let's move on to our next plant relative. The second commonly used plant for salves and healing oils that we are going to highlight is the dandelion or specifically the dandelion root. Now, dandelion is a non-native plant. However, it historically was quickly incorporated into indigenous traditional medicine practices as it spread across North America. And we had many dandelion relatives native to this area before the dandelion or the common dandelion appeared here on the North American lands. Dandelion root infusions and salves are traditionally used to soothe muscle tension and pain. They calm muscle spasms, reduce inflammation, um, can soothe skin irritations such as dry, chapped, or itchy skin and also used to treat and promote the healing of wounds, cuts, scraped, scrapes, and bruises. And again, dandelion is the one that is recommended for people that are just beginning out in harvesting and creating their own medicines because it is again widespread, easily identifiable, and excuse me, identifiable, and most people have it readily available to them. 
We do have to be very aware though that dandelion may be growing in areas where people are managing for weeds and we have to be very aware of if any kind of sprays are being applied in the area before harvesting. Those of you that received our salve making kits, you may have received a dandelion root oil. We sent out a two different options. Some people got the nettle, others got the dandelion root, and we hope that you enjoy making the salve out of this plant relative. Before we jump into our video tutorial of how to create your healing salve out of your oil infusion, I do want to go over the different recipes here. First, we have the oil, the oil herb infusion or plant infusion on the left, and then the salve making recipe from that oil infusion on the right. So those of you that got the kit from our traditional medicine program have received a jar of oil that already has the plants infused into it, but I did want to give the recipe or the directions on how to get that infusion. So a good rule of thumb when you're putting your oil over your plants or your plants into your oil is to weigh the dried plants in grams and then multiply that number by five. So as an example, if you get 100 grams of dried herb or dried nettle, then you will want to put that in 500 milliliters of oil. Then for the slow process or the cold infusion process mentioned earlier, you want to leave that jar, leave the herbs in the jar for four to six weeks in a low lit area, mixing it every few days. Or there's the faster heated method and you can put that jar in a crock pot on warm, not low, for eight to 12 hours. You can go longer than the 12 hours if you have a woody plant, but if you're doing like an herbaceous plant, uh, a very leafy thin plant, the eight hours should more than do it. And you wanna do that with warm water in the crock pot covering about one quarter of the jar. When you remove the jar from the crock pot, you want to strain the herbs from the oil and pour that into a container and then it's ready to use. And you can take that infused oil to make your healing salve. So the recipe on the right is how to make the salve. We'll be going over it in our video here on the next slide, but I did want to go over that recipe. So to make the salve, you're going to take five parts of your infused oil by volume and mix it with one part of beeswax by weight. So as an example, that would be 100 milliliters of oil to 20 grams of beeswax pellets. Now I measured this out and it equates basically to about one cup of oil to a quarter cup of beeswax pellets, a little under a cup of that oil. So to make the salve, what you're gonna do is heat the oil on medium, medium low, just until it's able to melt the beeswax. So put the oil in, put the beeswax in, put it on medium and warm it up just until that beeswax melts. Be careful not to overheat. The hotter that you get your oil, the less medicinal benefits you will get in your end product. So we wanna keep that temperature as low as we can and still get that beeswax melted. Then you want to fill your containers with your oil and wax mixture and then let it cool and your salve is ready to use. The oils and salves last one to two years when you're using dried plants. And you can do all of these same processes with fresh plants, but those will only last about six months, maybe up to a year, because there is still some moisture left in the end product. They do spoil faster than the salves when you're making it out of those dried plants. All right, we'll jump into our video tutorial now. Okay, here we go with our salve making tutorial. So for those of you that received a kit from our traditional medicine 
program, your kit should have came with a jar of already infused medicinal oil. And your kit will include which of the two different oil options that we sent out, some information on that. You will also have a package of beeswax for your salve. And then there will be labels for you as well. The things that you will need from your kitchen to make the salve are obviously a pot. Here I'm using a hot plate, but you'll just need uh, to put that on your stove, right? You'll need a container, which comes with your kit as well. Uh, the, the container that you guys receive will be a different shape, but really you can use any container with a lid for making your salve, as long as it can take hot material into it. Um, also, I like to have on hand a small ladle or measuring cup and a little funnel for when I am pouring my material into my container. And then a wood spoon and a rubber spatula comes in handy but is not necessary. And so this is all that you need to make your salve. The first thing you're going to do is turn on your stove <clears throat> to about medium temperature. Open your jar of medicinal oil and pour that in to the pot. And here's where I like to use this rubber spatula so I'm really getting all of the oil out and into my pot. <clears throat> so we've got our medicinal oil in there. For those of you that are following along that did not receive the kit or watching this kind of independently from our salve making kit giveaway, just refer back to the previous slide in this video for the recipe and how to um, get that oil infusion and the correct weights and amounts for the salve portion of it. So then we're going to open up our package of beeswax. What you guys were sent is 100 milliliters of infused oil to 20 grams of beeswax. That's again that 5 to 1 ratio. So if you are doing 500 milliliters of your oil, you would do 100 grams of that beeswax as an example. So now we have our infused oil in our pot on medium and we put our wax in. Now you can get wax in all sorts of shapes and sizes. You can get it in these little tiny beads. You can get big bricks of it. I have just found that trying to break down uh, the bigger pieces of wax, it's really hard and challenging to get it cut down to a size where it melts really evenly. And so I just go ahead and get these small little wax pellets for making my salve nowadays. I started out using a big solid brick of it and hand grating and cutting that down um, but now I just go right to getting these little beads so we've heated it up over that medium heat and you can see that now those wax beads have almost disappeared as I'm stirring it around it's almost to just fully li liquid so we're going to turn down our heat or turn off our heat Kind of let any remaining wax beads melt down until we get a nice liquid. I'm going to scooch my hot plate aside. And what we have now is just our oil with the beeswax that we can pour into our container. And as it cools, it will solidify. Remember, we learned that plant oil stays liquid at room temperature, but that beeswax is a very, very solid fat that at room temperature. And so we are relying on that beeswax to thicken up our infused medicinal oil so that we can use it as a salve. 
One of the nice things about a salve traditionally is it was easily transportable. And so I'm just pouring this into my container by hand, but you may choose to scoop it out with your measuring cup and then use your funnel to funnel that in to your container. This can help with spills if you're really not confident um, handling that hot pan or if you're doing a large amount. Um, and so I put a small amount into my container here and then I'm putting the rest of the salve right back into the jar that the oil came in. And so for those of you that get a kit, what you'll wind up with is one large container of the salve and then one small container of the salve. And so one that you can give away or share and then another you can keep for yourself if you would like. And so this is really all there is to making a salve. We use that infused medicinal oil and then we add in that beeswax for a solidifier and then we let this cool and it will be a somewhat solid consistency. I mean it will be solid until you scoop kind of into it and then it softens and melts very easily in your hands. So there it is. This is how we make our healing salves. I hope you enjoy making this medicine and uh, thank you for joining us for this tutorial.